Many people are put off getting their first EV because they've heard it's much too expensive unless you can charge at home. About one third of the UK cannot charge at home. Those living in flats or in terraced houses or semis with no off-street parking. But the technical developments that are happening to help those very people are simply amazing. Some are fully developed, some still in prototype, some just an idea. But all might come to the rescue of that third who cannot charge at home. Yet. I'm Dave. This is Dave Takes It On. Welcome Titans. We're dealing here with those that do live on streets or roads, but have no off-road parking space. Many semis and terrace fall into this category where the owner can often park outside the home, but that in many cases just doesn't help. Councils are very concerned about safety, and having a cable draping across the pavement is a definite no, and rightly so. But it is frustrating for those concerned. So close, but still so far. Well, that's different for those living in flats, where they may be a considerable distance, both vertically and horizontally, between the car and the home. Now, we're already researching solutions to those living on, for example, the 17th floor of a building. Here, there are also some amazing developments. They're not included here, but they're by no means forgotten. We have in the past looked at cable gullies, and these are a good solution. We saw them recently at a Power Up event in Liverpool, but there seems to be much confusion about them. Many councils just believe them to be cable covers. These are things they lay on top of the pavement, like usually rubberized, presenting a bump in the surface, which could hinder wheelchairs or buggies and potentially present a tripping hazard. Well, these are in common use at concerts where cables have to be placed across walkways and councils seem to have no problem with them there with massive footfall. But the proper gullies that we saw present no such issues. Here, a channel is cut into the pavement and a rigid structure, like a long cage, is inserted where the top of the structure is flush with the pavement surface. These can produce no tripping hazards at all, nor any hindrance to pedestrians. Still, many councils just lump them all together and ban them. Well, at this event, we saw for the first time a very different solution from a company called Trojan Energy, and we managed to have quite a chat with them. So we're talking to Martin, your business development manager. So can you tell me what a business development manager for Trojan Energy actually does? Absolutely. So it's about coming out to events such as this one today here in Liverpool uh, to talk about the company and about the products. Also to engage with local authorities, um, because ultimately we install on their streets um, without their permission, we can't install. So probably 90% of my job is talking to local authorities, explaining about the product and you know, trying to get their buy-in to install it on their streets. Well, they looked at it very simply. If you cannot lay anything on the pavement and you can't cut into the pavement, then just go underneath the pavement. <laughs> really simple. Simply burrow a good safe distance under the pavement and then bury your EV charger also under the pavement so simple. Well, there's no disruption to the pavement whatsoever. It remains completely intact. At the gutter end, where the car's going to be parked, a vertical hole is dug about half a metre or so deep to house the EV home charger. Now, let's get on to a little bit about the technology. Mm -hmm. So we're dealing with people who can't charge at home. Yes. Um, and I've in the past covered things like cable gullies, mm -hmm. which a bit of a hit and miss. Some of the councils accept them and like them, and some yep, don't. Some, absolutely. Yep. Uh, we're dealing also with Tristy, who are looking at lampposts. Mm -hmm. You've got a very different route. What's your uh, approach on this? Absolutely. So our technology is for the same kind of target audience. So people that don't have off-street parking. So it could be terraced houses. It could be apartment blocks or something like that. Um, but. Our charger, the way we've had a look at this, how do you bring charging to the masses yeah. without causing chaos and disruption or too much disruption on the pavements? So we've designed our product. The actual charger sits underground. Uh, the top of the charger sits flat and flush with the pavement level. And then we have an adapter which removes from the charge point when you're not charging. So when there's no charging, there's no street clutter. The street is left clear. It's, it's, there's no kind of visible obstructions or physical obstructions. 
and then each individual has their own adapter which they plug in when they need to charge. Uh, right, so we imagine the terraced house just goes through this in my mind, terraced house with a pavement and they can park in the street. The only thing visible will be a plate on the pavement. Correct. And there's stuff underneath. Yep, the charger itself is underneath. And that's connected that's to the house or to a, to a that grid? Can, both. Oh, so there's, okay. there's two ways of doing it. So we can connect to a new DNO connection and you can run between six and 10 charge points from that connection. So all, all connected to underground together or you can connect a single charge point to a domestic electricity supply. So it's an existing supply, obviously cheaper installation costs. So in other words, they can still have a home charger, it's just not in the home, it's out on the pavement. Yep, it's like a virtual driveway, if you like, out on the pavement. <laughs> so. Okay, let's get in the, away from the technical stuff. Just for now, we'll come back to it, but let's see how they're progressing with local councils. And that is really good news. London Borough of Barnet ordered an initial 500 to be installed, but as Robert Poole, the EV infrastructure manager for the council, said, uh, Trojan's economic model allowed for up to 15 charge point with a single electrical connection, and their ongoing support made it easy for us to award a further contract for an additional 800 charge points. End of quote. Uh, obviously one very happy and satisfied customer, by no means the only one. Uh, in Bonnet, they're now up to 1,230 charge points, covering a total of 107 streets and roads. And Trojan's now working with many councils on similar projects, like Bexley, Harrow and Camden, all in the London area. But they're now as far west as Ceredigion Council near Aberystwyth in far west Wales. Hope you like my pronunciation. It seems to have answered a number of issues that other systems cannot resolve so easily. Here, when not in use, there's little to see. It's just a flat button flush with the pavement, and the EV driver keeps the adapter in the boot of their car. When in use, the adapter is unobtrusive, it's right near the kerb, so it presents much less of a hazard, and for nighttime use, it lights up. But they've also been very careful to make sure that the lights are designed so as not to shine into nearby windows, creating their own hazard. The system's being accepted by a growing number of councils and the versatility of it is quite amazing. We met up with them in Liverpool at the Power EV Power Up event, and they're quite happy to talk to any council or any individual potential customer who shows an interest. So we're speaking with the Combined Authority, Liverpool Combined Authority, which is a number of councils that make up the Combined Authority. They're very interested in, in our technology and other EV charging technologies. Um, they've got some funding from the government, which really helps. Part of it's called the Levi funding for the for those that are not aware, um, which is really helping to roll out infrastructure across the country. So Levi is the local, local electrical vehicle infrastructure. infrastructure fund. So this is putting this stuff absolutely. Stuff in. And each council area has applied for different amounts of funding. Right. Some like Liverpool are in the combined authority. Other councils are unitary authorities. They've just got funding just purely for that council. But the ultimate aim is to get EV charging on the street so that people can can access that charging and, and transition to EVs. This is yours. This is all that you see. This is all you see. So I guess you mentioned gullies there. So in a similar scenario whereby we're connecting to the home electricity supply, the difference between us and the gully is that the cabling we do is all underground, which runs under the pavement and then up to the charger. So right, so you don't see anything don't, on the don't pavement. See anything it's at all, all, all underground. All you see is this disc at the top of the pavement, which sits flat and flush. And underneath that is the charger. Underneath that is the charging cartridge, which right. slots into a hollow metal cylinder, which is what we call the base unit, which right. goes about a metre deep. It's concreted in, in place, which gives it the same ISO standard rating as a manhole cover, right. meaning if a vehicle, a 40 tonne truck or whatever, mounts the pavement and parks on it, it doesn't damage the charger at all. Okay, so all that you will see is one of those. And if you walk on that, touch that, it's that's locked. It is, yep. It's locked and, and nothing will happen. You can wheel things, prams and everything over Absolutely, it. Yeah. And from a connection point of view, there are two options, I gather. Mm -hmm. One is you can come from the house directly to this. Yep. It's effectively, and no, so not owned, but it's effectively the charger. Mm -hmm. Or this can go into a, uh, a grid. And then if you take a, a typical uh, terrace street, maybe 100 houses, mm -hmm. um, you can tackle all of that. You, you get your power into a central point and then you Absolutely, distribute yeah. it out to... to and these, right. e each one of these will supply about six. 
So we can we can do minimum six charges, or we can do a maximum of ten. So right. ten okay. charges for a street of hundred vehicles would, would probably right. be fine. We could do it at one end of the street, or you could have some charges at one end, some at another. Okay. Both sides of the street, one side of the street. We can install around a corner to an adjacent street, so you can okay. have half in one, half in another, and then the, the feeder cabinet would be on the corner, so you can cover multiple streets. So it's quite flexible in terms of the solution. And you take responsibility for getting the electrical yes, supply we, we in. All of you that. do everything. Yes. Okay. Correct. So we've got that in the pavement. You've got something in your hand. To explain how that works, if you would. So the hardware is the same in both instances, whether you're connected to your home or whether you're connected to the new DNO connection. So it's a charger underground, which is the cartridge that I've mentioned, and then this, which is the adapter. So that's provided to this an is, individual house? Yes, this is provided to an, an individual at a home. Each one has a, a unique identifier number, serial number, what have you, so we know exactly whose adapter it is. You can't nip along and nip someone else's power. So <laughs> we, we know who has plugged in where. So. Okay. Let's say it's connected to, um, it's in the hub area, there's six charges on the street, yep. and this is my adapter. I come out of my house, I, this is in the boot of my car, for example. Yep. So just take this out, I hold it up over the charge point. The metal plate here is locked in place normally. When you hold this up, the electromagnetics... Um, so that's your unlock key. The unlock key, essentially, yep. enables that to unlock. This then slots into place. And there are some pins in there which shoot out and, and they lock this in place. So when you're actually charging, nobody can just come along and take this out. Right, and there's an individual identifier in there. So you can literally plug in. Could you yes, plug so into one in a different city? In theory, you can. If someone went down to visit someone in yep. London, could they plug that in there and you'd know who it is? Yes, so in theory, any adapter, okay. Trojan adapter will work any Trojan charge point. However, not all local authorities want people to come in necessarily and oh, yes. create extra traffic in yeah. to come into charge etc and some people have um, control parking zones all that sort of thing yes so what we can do with the back office because each one of these adapters is unique we can work with a local authority to say what's what sort of catchment area do you want do you want it open to all liverpool residents yeah or you know anyone in the north or do you just yeah. lock it down to uk, say, UK <laughs> whoever or do you want or to lock it down the to the, one street and, yeah. and we can we can do that so then right I'm plugged in, the system knows it's me that's plugged in. If you're plugged into the charger over there, it knows that it's you. Yeah. So it knows exactly how much electricity so, I've used and it will send, and bill me for that and you know, we'll see how much electricity you've used. Okay, so uh, you need your own cable, which all cars all come All cars come with the cable, which will be in the car. You, take, you plug this in, you take the cable out of, out of the boot, plug it into here, plug it into the vehicle and away you go, it's, it's plug and play. We do have an app that you can use to, to track charging and all, all that sort of stuff you would but normally do. But it's not do. an activation app, it is but a monitoring. Not, yes, correct. So literally, once you've got one of those, you plug it in. Plug it in and you, off you go. Off you go. Yep. And there's the, no swipe card, there's no app that you need to, to, to activate it. And the cable will be locked at this end. The cable is locked. And it it's is at in. the car end. Absolutely right. So as long yep. as your car's locked, this is yep. all locked and therefore totally... Yeah, totally safe. say idiot-proof, but it never is. No, yeah. <laughs> Someone will find a way. But yeah, off, off you go, you do whatever you're doing. And when you come back you do this, the same process in reverse so you unlock your vehicle and that then sends a signal through the cable to allow this to unlock so the pins will come out this will stay in place initially you'll just take your cable out pop that away goes in the boot and then when you're ready there's a, an eject button here and that's sprung so that will actually so spring out. out yeah this is just a demo version so the spring is on activated but in real life that will, that will help to sort of this to spring out of the ground you just pop this in the boot of your car and away you go. And you don't need to worry about paying for the charging area then because you've got a Trojan account. Yes. So billing will be automatically done by us and we'll send you your bill. And do you, you do direct debit or do you do... Uh, you set up a direct debit. And, yeah. yeah. And you can, if you want to, you can look on the app, see how much you're spending, how long you're charging, all of the sort of features you might expect from a, a charging app. So to answer one of the questions, if they come to a street and they can't park outside their own house, mm -hmm. if they can park further down the street and these are in the whole street, they can just go to anyone yes. and charge there and it will be debited to them. That's personally. right, exactly, because this is the identifier. So this is. this is the key. So you know, right. wherever you park and charge, we know it's you and we know how much you've used. you and work with the councils to decide how big that area is. Is it right. just this street, just this house? Or is yeah, it we, we, can, we can lock it down to an individual charger. So this, this adapter will only work in this charger if that's what somebody desires. You know. Okay. 
going to come on to money now. I'm not going to go into all our detail because I know these are how long's a piece of string. Yeah. So we're and not it, going it changes there. from time to time. So, yeah. so, so, so. One of the biggest problems is there are an awful lot of on-street uh, chargers, and they are not the cheapest chargers in the country. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, some of them are really quite extortionate. So one of the worries people have is this is a great idea, this will work, everything technically, this is brilliant, but if they're going to charge me 80p uh, yeah, that's unaffordable. for this, I'm not going to use it. Mm. And it's a waste of time for everyone, you, resources, yep. everything. Um, so one of the attractions, I know my viewers will already be in on this, is I want it connected to my house. So yes. in principle, if I have a house and I switch to Octopus, for example, and have the overnight charging at 7p, can I run that tariff out of this? You can indeed. <laughs> right. Yep. That's going to come as a very yeah. welcome bit of news yeah, that, for them. That's kind of the, the golden bullet, isn't it? Everyone's looking for. And a home you could tariff. be down the bottom of the street in a yeah. different one, still charging on your home 7p yes. tariff. So with, the, with the home connected version, so yeah. which, is, which we call Aeon, so there's the charging hub, which is the multiple charges, the 6 to 10. Right. That's a different tariff because that's not connected to a domestic supply. Right. So, so this one would be outside your house and any time you charge, it will be at mm -hmm. the octopus rate. And what we're looking to do with this is make it shareable. So OK, so uh, can the house now make a profit? So <laughs> what we're looking to do, depending on the size of the street, is have multiple residents within that street yeah. have an Aeon charger. So you may have three or four Aeon chargers dotted around the street. Those people are what we term as hosts. Yes. So they pay a monthly subscription fee, for, and that covers the installation, it covers ongoing service and maintenance. So there's no support. money up front? They don't no upfront pay. money. No, okay. it's just a monthly fee that they pay, like a mobile phone contract, if you like. Right. Um, to use this, and for that, they get to access their home tariff on the charger outside their house. But also, if somebody's parked there, then they can't park there, they desperately need to charge. If they park on somebody else's Aeon, they also get their home tariff. It's portable because obviously, once again, right. the adapter knows who it is and what the tariffs are. Other residents who do not have the charger connected to their home, but still have an EV and would still like to charge, they can become what we term pay-as-you-go users. Right. So they can sign up, there's no monthly fee. They just pay, as it says, as they, as they go, pay-as-you-charge. Um, and they pay 10% below the base rate, um, which we take from ZapMap for that area. So okay. the base rate of the public charging. So and it's cheaper than standard public charging rates. And that's a, a standardized one. So different areas have different rates, but it'll always be 10% 10 less. below that rate. So the homeowner with one of these can get the 7p. They get there. But other people can then use it, because this is not, as we know, being used every day. Absolutely. So while it's not being used by them, they can use, does the homeowner get anything for that? Not with this current model. I mean, there are, there are possibilities that there could be some sort of payback for the homeowner. We actually did a lot of market research and to say, you know, what, what do you want from this? Do you, do you yeah. want to be able to make money yeah. or, or not? Or what, you know, what? Convenience, the, convenience or one savings. Yeah. The thing that came out of it, they just wanted to be able to charge conveniently and cheaply. Yeah as close to their home as they can. Yes. Yeah. So that's, However, that's what we're trying to give them. <laughs> I do know that we were looking at someone with um, a, 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 an individual uh, charger sharing service. Mm. So if, if, oh, okay. if my I'm own home charger yep. is not being used by me, I can rent it out. Yep. And a lot of people say, yeah, I just want the convenience, but as soon as they get a charger, they go, well, actually, wouldn't mind making a bit of money yeah. from it. <laughs> so yeah, might that, be something to look at in the future. It, it could be. I, th I think, yeah. you know, we have looked at that and thought about that, but then you've, you've obviously got some tax implications for the resident. If yeah, yeah. That's income, and are they going to declare it? And all. Declared income. Yeah, declared. So, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, it, it's, um, okay. it's a different, it becomes slightly more complicated. So for now, this is the model. Yeah. But who knows in the future, things change. Well, those of you out there waiting for a solution to not being able to charge at home might just have found one. We will be keeping an eye on this and monitoring the process. We'd love to hear your thoughts. Are you one who cannot charge at home? Would this suit you? Maybe you're just thinking about it, looking into the idea of running your own charges as a CPO, a charge point operator, and you'd be interested in talking to Trojan. Let us know in the comments. And Dave, thanks for watching. As usual, like, comment, subscribe, and if you fancy it, 
join as a member. Thanks very much.